Oh, hi, Sarah. <laughs> Thanks for letting us into your home to discover your story. Um, I wonder if you could start back when, uh, I believe you went to university. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us where you went and what you were studying? I went to Coventry University in the end. Sport and Exercise Science with Human Resource Management. So you were very much into fitness and that sort of thing? Absolutely, yeah. Okay. And so how did things go with those studies? Brilliantly. Getting on really, really well. Um, until uh, 12th of March in my second year, it all stopped. And why was that? I was diagnosed with acute lymphoplastic leukaemia. And put straight into hospital. Um, and essentially told that I probably wouldn't survive the next five months and I had 10 to 20 percent chance of surviving the treatment which was two years long so um, that was that was the end of my degree and I was in hospital I was due to be married five months after the date that I was diagnosed it was all planned booked paid for um, to a man I wanted to marry and we wanted to have children and and at that point they said I probably wouldn't still be alive and there was no chance I'd ever have any children. We met um, almost, well, two and a half years before my diagnosis. Got engaged after being together a year. Um, and God really wrought into me. I didn't want to be with anybody. Um, and God showed me in a number of ways that he was, he was the man that he wanted me to be with and God even gave us our wedding date so when I was diagnosed they said you probably won't still be alive for your wedding day so let's bring it forwards we'll get you married in your hospital room and um, I said no he gave us the 16th of August as a wedding date very long story how I knew it was from him but there were I, I knew that that was the day and my parents are both Christians but they both said look no let's downsize it so that we've saved some of the money so if you're not well enough we can do it again but I knew it was from God and I knew although my treatment plan said I wouldn't be well enough I knew I would and I was so this was just over just over 10 years ago and you found yourself in hospital yes what sort of treatment was it you were having the treatment was um a collaboration of different things. It was um, lumbar punctures, um, bone marrow extractions, it was um, intravenous chemotherapy, steroids. Um, and in fact, they once told me that they'd given me enough to kill a horse several times. Um, but I'm stubborn. I'm a stubborn mule. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, and God had a plan for my life, and I'm, I'm still trying to live through you know working out what that is but he certainly wanted me here um i defied the odds and um and even one of my nurses um put her job on the line to save my life um less than two weeks before the wedding um i got uh, septicemia unbeknownst to me um, we had a rule that if my temperature went above 38 degrees or, or hit 38 degrees I had to get straight to hospital within 30 minutes because I had no immune system and um, I couldn't fight it myself and I went I just felt awful um, and I, I just went up to bed took my temperature and um, that it was fine so I went to bed and I tried to get to sleep and I couldn't and though there was a voice in the room somebody in the room talking to me and it said if you don't get to hospital tonight you won't be here tomorrow and so I took my temperature again it was fine but I just couldn't settle having heard that twice I, I phoned my mom who was downstairs and I said mom I've, I've got to go in and she she was surprised when she said is your temperature up I said no and I hated going in and I would go in as a last resort, so she was surprised that I was requesting to go in and my temperature hadn't spiked. Um, but anyway, so she, her and Dad got me down the stairs and, and she took me into hospital. By the time I got into hospital, my temperature was over 40. 
Um, I was vomiting, I was so poorly. They had to, they rushed me in, had to take arterial blood. Um, and I had septicemia. And so they called the on-call doctor. And he came and didn't give, didn't prescribe the right antibiotics and left. And one of my nurses, the only thing I really remember from that night is her screaming, if we don't get the right drugs in this kid, she's gonna die. Um, Tony and my mum were told I probably wouldn't make it through the night, so they were there holding my hand. Um, and she gave me the drugs that I needed without them being signed off, which could have lost her her job. But had she not done that, I wouldn't be here. Um, so again, and, and had I not had that voice in the room, I wouldn't have gone to hospital. I would have, they would have just found me gone in the morning. Um, and that was before the wedding. That was about two weeks before the wedding. So. And yet, um, it sounds like you got well enough after that to go through the wedding. I had an amazing improvement. Um, and on the wedding day, um, I, I couldn't have felt better. I, you know, made it through the whole day. Um, I, it was just the best point in my treatment. It was fabulous and obviously I saw a whole load of people that I hadn't seen in five months because from the diagnosis I was isolated so it was amazing and so here you are your uh, college study is on hold uh, you have leukemia you've just got married how does life carry on under those circumstances looking back I don't know um, it was just a case of get through each bit of the treatment and I had fantastic support from my parents and my husband and um, somehow we found the strength to get through but it wasn't our strength. When I met Tony I used to sing. I used to sing um, in a band, I used to sing for the church. It was my life. I used to write songs. It was my release. And Tony had always said to me, please will you sing to me on our wedding day? And I said no. Not on our wedding day. Not a chance. I'd written and sung a song for a friend's wedding. They asked me to write a song. And so I did and I performed it for their wedding. But I'd written it on my feelings for Tony. So when Tony asked me to sing a song on our wedding day, I thought, well, I can't reuse that song and I can't write another song because that was written on my feelings for Tony. So I'd said no. But on our wedding day, I thought, he, he hasn't asked much of me. He hasn't, you know, really requested much for the wedding or from me, or but that's the one thing he did want. And, so I thought the one thing I can give him is, is to do that. So I sang to him on our wedding day a Shania Twain song from this moment on. Then I didn't sing again for a decade. Being in an isolation room, being limited from who you see, being separated from the world, it took me a very, very long time to even be around people again. I used to, I, I didn't like people behind me or around me. I was in a little room with one door in and only two people could come in at a time. So to then suddenly have a group of people or, or being visible, or I, I just, I didn't like it. I, I, I felt uncomfortable, I felt anxious. And I just wanted to hide from the world really. Um, you know, I'd rather be, be the cleaner than the speaker. I, I just, it changed me.